And welcome back to more Talking Law TV. We're here with Christy Register. Hey, Michael. How are you, Christy? Good, thank I you. I hope you had a Merry Christmas. Yes. And we're looking forward to seeing you again next year on Talking Law TV right. 2010. Be with you another year. And you'll be back with us. Yeah. And uh, tonight, we're going to, or today, we're going to talk about Georgia unemployment benefits. Yes. And a lot of people, unfortunately, at this time of year had to get through Christmas. And maybe 2010 will be a little better for them. I hope so. Uh, and they'll find a job. But in the meantime, um, if they're out of work and they need to apply for unemployment, what do they do first? You go down to the Department of Labor office and file a claim. Um, need to bring ID, Social Security number, and uh, if if you received a letter of separation from your employer, then bring that. A lot of people don't get that, so it's not necessary. But the uh, Department of Labor will need the employer's name and address. Now, does it matter if you were terminated, fired, laid off? company went out of business? It does matter. Um, if you were truly laid off um, for, for lack of work or if the company closed, then um, you should be entitled to receive the benefits. Um, now, would that be the case at a place like Gulfstream where they run out of work and they let like 500 people go and then they bring them back in four months? Yes. Yeah. If, if, if it's a temporary unemployment situation, then you still will qualify for unemployment benefits. But if it's a company, say, that just closed the doors and put a chain link put a lock yeah. on the fence. Then, then you'll still be, uh, you should be able to receive benefits. Now, who pays those benefits? Does the company pay them? The employers do. Now, what if they're out of business? How, what happens? Well, it, it's uh, funded by taxes that are paid by employers throughout the state. So there's a reserve there? Yeah, yes. Okay. And, and if I'm, this happens to me on October 1st and I, I apply on November 1st, am I going to get paid for the time that I was out of work? No. You will not. They do not backdate benefits. So if you get unemployed October 1st, October 1st or 2nd, you need to go down to the Department of Labor. And what's the process once you get down there? Um, you, you fill out the claim and then they process it. And I believe they're really quick about doing that and uh, giving you uh, the response as to whether you qualify to receive benefits. Right, so they have an application process? They do, and, and I think they're very efficient. Obviously, they know that people are in dire straits when they come to them. Um, so they process it quickly and, and get your benefits. Now, you will get the back, ben uh, back benefits that go uh, back to the, your date of filing for unemployment. Okay. So if it takes them three weeks or so, then, then you'll get those benefits back. And is that generally about how long it takes to get things um, going? I, I b believe so. From what I've heard people say, it's usually a week, two, three. And you said to make sure people show up prepared, you need a driver's license? Uh, yeah, they, they want some form of identification, your Social Security number. Um, if you've got that letter of separation, if not, you need the employer's name and address. And you need, uh, if you weren't employed by the same employer for the last 18 months, you need all your employers uh, for the last year and a half. And does everybody, is, is it an automatic qualification? It is not. If you, um, in general, if you're laid off through no fault of your own, then you'll uh, get the benefits. If you were fired for cause, for failure to perform your job or insubordination or being late, then, then in general you will not qualify for benefits. Um, Is those, are those the only determining factors? Um, it's my understanding, yeah, that they, they, look at that they look at the reason for termination. So um, if, if you resign for poor working conditions or harassment, then um, you'll, you'll have to provide testimony for the Department of Labor, and then they'll make their determination. If, uh, if you resigned because you've got a family member that's ill and you need to take care of them, then, then that will not qualify for unemployment. So uh, if you're laid off, you'll, you'll most likely qualify. If you resign, then it has to be for good cause related to working conditions. You mentioned harassment, uh, sexual bullies, et cetera. I think any um, realistic uh, working conditions that are that are very difficult. I'm I'm not talking about you know it, it's a job, so it's, it's not going to be a piece of cake. Um, but any uh, bad conditions that that would cause any reasonable person to not want to work there. Now, once they you would consider once you apply and let's say you're approved, how long can you stay on unemployment? The maximum is 26 weeks, um, but there are conditions in which you would uh, qualify to reapply and extend the benefits. What, what kind of situation would, would cause that to be in effect? Um, uh, various, it depends on what kind of job that you had. Um, 
they'll look in to see, uh, are you likely to be rehired? You know, a lot of companies are having furloughs um, or maybe shutting down until spring production. Um, so they'll take uh, factors like that into consideration. Obviously, your best bet is to really be aggressive in your job search and get another job. And how much money do you get? It depends on your income that you made in your job in the last uh, 18 months. The maximum day was 3.30 a week, so I mean that's not even not, a minimum wage, is it? Bar well, maybe yeah. barely. Um, right, but it certainly, for most people, is not going to be as good as a paycheck. Right. So if you were making big bucks, it's going to be a big change of life. Right. Right. Your best bet is to really be aggressive and try to get another job right. as quickly as you can. So on this, on this $330, it's like, thank God you don't pay taxes on it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, no, no. No, you do pay taxes. Uh, it is, um, you pay federal and state taxes. So your 330 at the so most is down to 220 -ish. Right. Right. And, uh, you know, for and obvious reasons, they don't want to make it fantastic because then a lot of people, you'd, you'd have the incentive not to get a job. So, um, you know, they... The purpose of unemployment benefits is to serve as a temporary uh, means of, of your getting by. It is not meant to be permanent or for people to say, oh, yeah, I'm going to take a vacation. That's not the purpose behind it. So even at 3.30, you're not going to get that automatically. You, it's a, is it a, so what's the least you could get? $44 a week is the minimum. So but, but again, they look, at, they look at the wages that you made before you got terminated. So if you were a minimum wage person... Then you're going to get minimum wage. Forty-four dollars a week. Unemployment. And, and if you receive a job offer, do you have to take it to stay out to keep your unemployment, or, or do you uh, get, reserve the right, or they take, say that you just no longer can have the check? Well, every uh, week that you're on unemployment, you have to uh, requalify. You have to show the unemployment office, the Department of Labor, that you are searching for a job and, and doing your best. Um, if you are offered a job and it's comparable to the job that you had before and the pay is comparable, then yes, they would expect you to take it. And if you don't, then you may lose your benefits. And then you're just um, worse than you were before. You're right, right. You know, hopefully most hardworking Americans, if they get a comparable job offer, they're going to take it. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Christy. We look forward to seeing you again next year on our 2010 episodes. And we'll be back with Doug Andrews talking about support for the troops and their families at home right after this.